I don't feel like it's it's fair to me to have so much success because something as ugly as that has driven me to this point. You know, with everything that I do, it's for number 40. It's, you know, it's for my brothers. But I can, I can say, honestly, that I do feel like he's happy. He's happy to see me doing what I'm doing. Just like I'm happy every time a game comes on, I hear his name on ESPN, uh, ABC, Fox Sports. I don't care about the story. Like, I did a lot of wrong, a lot of wrong things happened to me, but this is exactly how I pictured it, sitting in my jail cell. I wouldn't change a thing that has happened to this day. I would not change one thing. I do not care. People can say what they want about me. They can call me a felon, a high school dropout, college dropout. I don't care because I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I want to do in my life. And you know, that's, I owe a lot of that to Devin's death. And I know he's proud of me. And that's why I don't seek the approval for anybody else with anything that I do. People can judge, people can say this, people can say that, but I made it to where I want to be in life. You know, I'm in school, I'm getting a degree. Yeah, I made a lot of bad decisions, but so does everybody else. I don't feel like people should judge other people just because I sin in a different way than you do. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. And if, 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 if I could say one thing to Devin right now, it'd just be thank you, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm gonna miss that kid. I'm gonna miss him to death. We are now finally starting to have the conversations my people have been waiting a very, very long time to have. We're not asking for money or handouts or privilege. All we're asking for is a level playing field. I want my son to be afforded the same opportunities as every single white kid in America. If that sentence offends you, then you are clearly a part of the problem. If you don't see how uneven this game of life is for people of color, then you simply are choosing not to. Read books, watch documentaries, speak up when you see racism. Just know, history never forgets and the internet is forever. Your silence is being well documented. My name is Shaquille McKissick and black lives have always mattered. That's the beauty of the journey, you know. It's it's not about you know the end destination. It's about the journey. So you gotta understand, like you know, we trying to live a hundred years. So you know, uh, that's that's that that divides into four quarters. We still in our first quarter, you know. So uh, my advice is only just you know live life a second at a time. We can only live in this present moment. We can't be worried about too much else. So you know, in that present moment, just you know, enjoy wherever you at. Enjoy knowing that you loved by your, your close ones and enjoy the ones that you love, your son, your wife, me, <laughs> basketball, God, and you know, hey, you the man. Above all, you know you the man, you got it. So being an athlete overseas, a 
a lot of people just see the dollar signs and think that you know that's a good enough sacrifice for family friends and loved ones back home but after being over here for so many years it really does start to take its toll and, um, sometimes it just feel like it's not worth it at all you know um, when you have a mom that's battling with breast cancer and she's having surgeries and um, you have to worry about who you're going to play next the next person at your garden you know it just it just kind of puts everything into perspective so when I joke around and say, oh, next year I'm going to retire or I could retire in two years. People think that I'm joking, but, you know, since college, it's been a decade of me not seeing family, me not being able to be there for my family. And it sucks, you know, it's, it's not a good feeling. You You go through things like... I have to miss my son's birthday. You know, today's his birthday, and I, I'm not able to be there with him. You know, I have to talk to him through FaceTime, through a camera. And nobody wants to see their son grow up, you know, through FaceTime, or their nieces and nephews grow up through FaceTime, or see my mom get old through FaceTime. But it's a whole decade um, that I'm not there, and it starts to really take its toll, and you just don't know if it's worth it, you know. You just don't know. Yo, what's up? This is Mr. Number 77 from Olympiacos, BC, Shaq McKissick. Oh my God, look at you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
dear Koa, <laughs> happy birthday to you. Bye, I love you. Talk to you soon. I love you. Bye. Talk to you soon. Love you. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye. 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 Hola. from America to being in Europe if if you're not open-minded to everything the cultures um, the political aspect the religious aspect of, of, of every other country then you're gonna have a really hard time um, for me it was it was more easy because I was prepared I prepared myself mentally that this is not America this is a country I've never been to around a culture I've never lived in around people who had never really seen a black guy before you know um, so uh, for me I, I, I was excited to see what it was going to be like my first experience was Italy it was amazing uh, my son was born in Italy and uh, halfway through the season I left for um, South Korea and that was interesting Russia was interesting Turkey was amazing Greece was amazing um, and both of these cultures are very similar um, uh, but I, it's almost like I enjoy being in Europe more now just because of all the craziness that's going on in America um, with everything that's going on from the president to um, there being a, re a revolution for um, African Americans. Um, it's, it's a wonderful time to be, you know, African American in, in, in America, but it's also very draining, very taxing, um, very worrisome with my family being back there. Um, but I'm, I'm European, this is Euroshack. first game with uh, Panantheakos, um, I remembered I was extremely nervous, but I was so ready for the moment. Um, if there was ever a time in my life where I knew I had to perform, it was this game. Um, just with everybody telling me what to expect, you know, uh, how big it's going to be. Usually when people tell you that, you know, they're always over-exaggerating, but this was the one time in my life where I felt like nobody was over exaggerating. It was truly crazy. The fans were nuts. The game, the atmosphere was insane. All of our teammates, all of my teammates were pumped up. 
And um, when I first got back um, to the Peace and Friendship Stadium after COVID, you know, returning, I could just smell the hallways and it immediately took me back to that game. And uh, that's why I'm so ready for the season to start so I can have a lot of more experiences like that. What would I tell my 18 year old self? Man, I'm a know-it-all now. And I was a bigger know-it-all then. So, I mean, um, it'd be hard, you know, but to just keep fighting, you know, just to always keep fighting, don't give up because um, even at 18, I knew that I would be here. Um, I knew I would be in a position where I would be able to play basketball for money, but at that point in time, I had no idea how hard it would be. But when I look back, you know, those were some of the funner, the funner times, you know, um, working out every single day, grinding, going to classes, not going to classes, dropping out of high school, dropping out of college. You know, that made me into the person I am today. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't know what to say if I, if I met my 18 year old self, because I wouldn't want to mess up this opportunity. You know, everything that I've been through it, it happened for a reason and I'm extremely happy that it did. I have an amazing wife, an amazing son, all off of those decisions that I made when I was 18, you know. You, you, you never quite have it all figured out, but when you figure it out, it, it's amazing for sure. Uh, wow. <laughs> oh man. Um, I don't want to speak about Turkey and Greece, that's the thing. Um, but moving from Istanbul to Athens is um, comparing day to night. And Istanbul is very fast paced. It's more like a New York City vibe. And in Athens, it reminds me more of slowed down, maybe Miami type style. Um, and to be honest, me and my wife, we love living both in Istanbul and in Athens. If we had to choose one, I really don't know which one we would choose, but we really love Athens. So we're happy that we're here for sure. So when I first met my wife, it was a very dark time in my life. Um, although things were kind of going good for me on the basketball court, not as good as they could be, everything was in complete shambles off the court. Uh, this is about a year ago, no, about 18 months ago, I had lost uh, one of my best friends, one of my closest friends. Um, he was playing in France, his name was Jermaine Marshall. We played at Arizona State together. And I remember um, telling him about her before he passed. And um, he was like, you know what, if you want it, go get it. So that's exactly what I did. And um, I told her the very first day that we met, I said, I'm going to marry you. And she just started laughing. I don't think she took me serious, but I knew deep down when you know, you know, and I knew then. So about three months later, three or four months later, um, we were getting married in Gaziantep in Turkey, um, in the city that I was playing basketball in. And uh, we kind of just been together ever since and inseparable. Everywhere I go, she goes. Um, it's kind of one of those things. I think having somebody that you can consider a rock in your life is one of the most pivotal things because it helps you both in the good times and the very bad times. For example, um, when I'm on the court and things aren't going good, I always know that, okay, at the end of the day, I get to go home to my wife and she's gonna love me no matter what happens on this court. So. Um, it really helps me get through those tougher moments. Um, and when things are going good on the court, I know she's in the crowd going crazy. And uh, usually things are going good, but um, when they're not, for sure, it's, it's good to have somebody in your corner always. Without her, you know, I don't think I would be where I am today. So I have to give her a lot of credit, for sure. 
attack. <laughs> um, we met a couple years ago. In the first day, he asked me to marry him. I was thinking he was just trying to be funny, but he was being serious, as you see. <laughs> but um, we started living together in Gaziantep. After that, we moved to Istanbul, and then now we are in Greece. Before the games, I feel like he's nervous, but he doesn't like to show his feelings a lot. But after the games, if it's a good game, which most of the time it is, he's very happy. I'm very happy for him. I almost cry, but yeah, it's very fun after the games, most of the time. I love Greece so much. I just find out I'm from Greece, actually. I'm so happy about it. Uh, at first, it was very hard to understand how the culture is, how the food is, but uh, by time, I understand that it's very similar culture to where I'm from, which is Turkey. But I'm happy to be here. We are very similar with Greek people. <laughs> I'm a very supportive wife. Um, I love how he's playing the game. I love his dunks. Um, but I, every time he goes on that court, I know he's going to come back with success. So I just believe in him and he knows that. That's all. I love him so much. And this is a Fox News alert. Some very, potentially some very sad news to report to you. The we're helicopter getting they were traveling in crashed NBA outside of Los Angeles. Kobe Bryant no and at least white. four other people have been killed in a helicopter on the crash. Of Calabasas, California. We could be buried in Los Angeles. A piece of me died. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh... That's what I want to talk about. Life is short and it's fragile. And we don't know how many birthdays we have. So four, daughters, 41 years old. Call your friends, text your friends, hug this them, kiss them. Had passed me like you would never know. He was like a little brother. Please, rest in peace, little brother. You know, when you talk about somebody like uh, Kobe Bryant, you know, 17 NBA All-Star selections, uh, one NBA Finals MVP, five NBA championships, uh, Olympic gold medalist, two of them. Um, I think he's, <laughs> I think he's so hard to relate to because somebody that great, somebody with that much greatness, you can only strive to live half of the life that they've lived. Um, you always hear the stories about Kobe Bryant, his work ethic, his respect for the game, his knowledge of the game, and it's something that I've respected since day one. Kobe Bryant is and always will be one of the best athletes to ever grace this earth. Um, his impact on the world, I think, was tremendous. And was he a perfect person? No. But who is? Um, so if nobody's perfect, but everybody has the opportunity to achieve greatness, I think he won. I unanimously think he's won. I, re I remember as a kid, you know, my name is Shaquille, middle name O'Neal. So as a kid, of course, I was a Shaq fan. And you know what came with Shaq every single year was Kobe Bryant. So I remember watching the finals by myself in the room, jumping around. In every single shot Kobe took, I thought was going in. Every time Shaq got the ball, I thought he was going to dunk it. And I don't think you guys get it. Los Angeles is in California. Here I am, a Midwest kid living in Indiana. And on their three-peat, the first game that they played was against the Pacers. And I'm in Indiana. You know, they're playing the Indiana Pacers, and I'm rooting for Los Angeles. All because of my name. But I think that's just how the human mentality works. You know, so here I am. I'm a diehard Lakers fan, diehard Shaq fan. So with that, I had to become a diehard Kobe fan. 
and throughout the years just watching him play his excellence um his consistency um his his just love for the game was unmatched by anybody and i think that's why he's one of the greatest to ever play this game and he never and he didn't just stop on the court um you know he did he, he had foundations with his wife um you know he donated money to the terminally ill uh cancer patients um and and you know he took out the time having you know four daughters to help other women who wanted to be in sports and he supported and he encouraged you know the WNBA and um, uh, women's uh, college basketball and it's just really admirable and to me even though he had all of those great accolades and things that he did outside of the sport to me the biggest was winning an Oscar you know um, it, there are famous actors and actresses that have never won Oscars and he won an Oscar for his short film Dear Basketball and that immediately let me know that I'm able to play basketball on the court and also thrive off the court um, doing whatever it is I love to do. I think simply put, Kobe Bryant was immortal amongst men. That's just the bottom line. Pena versus Olympiacos. Um, I think this year is going to be a lot different than it was my very first year. Um, not having fans there, number one. So I don't think it's going to be the same experience, but um, we'll see, you know. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm hyped. Um, I'm extremely happy to be a part of this um, derby, you know. One of the most exciting derbies in Europe. I don't know what to expect from my teammates. Uh, especially the new teammates because this is their first year in the derby. I don't know if they're nervous, excited, anxious, um, but that's normal because you know my first year I was unbelievably nervous, um, anxious, and excited to get the game underway. Um, you know it's not the same team as last year, uh, and neither for us. So all I know is that we need this Euroleague win more than anything. Um, I think it's more important in the standings than it is in the derby, of course. We want to win the derby every time we play Pan Am. Uh, we'll just see. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm excited, of course. And mainly, I just know I'm asleep. Real peaceful tonight because, um, you know, I've never lost to Pan Am. So, I'm kind of going in with the mindset that we will win. I know in my heart of hearts that we'll win, so I have zero pressure right now. You know, I know what type of game it is. And especially with no fans, I think it'll make it a lot easier. And hopefully in four months when they come to play us at home in Peace and Friendship Stadium, we'll have our fans, which are undoubtedly the best fans in Europe. You know, one of the biggest fan bases in the world. So when that crowd gets going, you know, it's no stopping us. So hopefully they're there. That's exactly what his team needed there. McKissick drops a dime inside to Ellis, who lays it up and in. Here's McKissick on the bounce. A little shovel pass to his compatriot. Bianco's tradition, nice crossover by McKissick. He'll give it inside. And a finger roll finish. Putting the clinic on amongst the two young Panthenikos players. And McKissick, as Papa Pecker tries to have an influence. McKissick thought about a three. They're moving on to Brindisi's. And Brindisi's makes it rain. San Rose is picked from behind. McKissick with an easy lay and good defense by Shaquille McKissick as he picks the pocket. And it's Sykes, let me correct myself. No, no, it's Sykes with the assist and Foster with the three. On this end, it's McKissick with the dribble drive. I'll be honest, spreads it to me to the... Accepted by McKissick, good read by McKissick. Foster goes out of Shetkov and just lost the ball. Now it's a two on one here for Olympiacos. Harrison misses. McKissick with the tip in. Sorry about some of the errors on your graphic. Look at the score right now, it's 70 62. McKissick has found his seam and drives up and in, lays it up and in. McKissick drive here by Shaquille McKissick. 
it from the outside. It's all. Okay, so the derby is over, and of course we won. <laughs> I don't say of course like that, but um, you know, hats off to Panna. Um, they played a really exceptional game. Um, uh, they fought really hard. We fought really hard. Um, you know, but the thing is, the fans weren't there, so it, it's a completely different game without 20,000 fans roaring and you know um, <laughs> wanting you to lose the game. And this is my second year, or well, my first official year at Olympiaco, so hopefully next year I can come back and play in this derby again and it can be done the right way with fans and an, an environment and in, you know, the same type of environment that I experienced in Olympiacos almost seven months ago. Um, but again, I'm happy for the win. I'm happy that we got our first EuroLeague win. Um, that means a lot. And uh, now we're just looking forward to Milano and Maccabi. Challenged by Ellis. The day. I just want my a good position by the summer. Oh, a kiss it. That's what you call a rebound. That's somebody who's playing because he wants good things to happen. I forget I'm like, all the time, all the time, all the time. All these mistakes is on my mind. Got the same plate as Marty McFly. Regret is my new high. Nostalgia in my eyes. I just relax. I need rehab. I can't relax. I can't see past. Pass my pass. I'm in my bag. Trying to get back. I'm tryna buy a house But my credit score is less than four It's my fault, I'm a failure What I'm here for I know that you know what I'm on And my mistakes, I'm tryna keep going I'm hoping you hear me I'm stuck in my ways I've been bringing for days And I'm tired of running I'm hoping you want me I got simple questions I need simple answers He's got all day to look at that one Do you see me right now? Yeah, McKissick just too quick for Hunter at one! Well, McKissick just too quick for Othello Hunter on the perimeter. Glow by, and Hunter just trying to lay the lumber to prevent the lay-in. He gets beat on the bounce. Strong hands by McKissick. I believe that life is precious. You know, it's almost too precious. It's one of those things where you only get it once and once you lose it, you can't get it back. So my advice is to live every single day like it is your last because you never know what tomorrow holds. Um, I know life can be frustrating sometimes and sometimes it's really hard to figure out, but if you're having those problems and you're going through those hardships, you know, my best advice is to seek mental therapy and um, or Google, read books on how you can become a better person and how you can think better and how you can influence, uh, you know, everyday decisions with positivity because once it's over, I believe that it's over. You know? There is no coming back. Today's the big day. I'm super excited. My first episode of a show that I created, everything that I put into it, um, hours and hours of sitting at the computer, hours and hours of making every detail perfect, and it still isn't nowhere near perfect, but it will have to do for the first episode, and I'm super excited, man. Uh, this is what building a brand is all about. You know, you gotta, you gotta go out on a limb sometimes and do something nobody else is doing and just see what happens. 
I expect tonight for a lot of things to go wrong, but hopefully more things go right than wrong. Let's see. So right now, my co-host, I'm getting everything in order, but we added a new co-host this week. So we're getting him, uh, we're getting everybody caught up with the technology side of it. It's a little stickier than imagine, but we'll make it work. See, that's the, the difference. When you're a one-man crew on production side <laughs> and the co-host just sit and wait all day for you to start everything up, you have a lot of responsibilities, but we're going to get this done. Um. <laughs> it says you're offline, so just get on the app and see if you get a notification. Because it says you're in the group. It just says you're offline. Yeah, verify your identity. Just go to the email and boom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's that, that's why it is the heat of all heats.
just attack the writers. Very good in the first half. Well, it's not done yet though. Two and a half minutes ago, McClinton to the rim is able to finish. He still believes. Shift the Seska defense around. What a pass that is though. Back to Slukas. Lovely ball movement from Olympiacos. Papadakalao nails the three. Big shot at a big moment for Olympiacos. 24, the Seska lead. Shaquille McKissick, closing second, somebody's got to shoot. It's Costas Lucas for the win. Oh, beautiful baseline cut and a tomahawk jab. Confidence to knock down the two-pointer. As McKissick gets his own rebound, that's a score. Just about got it to go. To explode to the basket, but with Olympiacos in trouble, just wanted, just wanted to make sure. They all got away from it on the way up. Just about got it to go.
there. Just with a direction, McKissick knows it of course, but went right on time. And the pass was perfectly on target. McKissick with six first quarter points. Because he knew I was trying to get around the pick, he knows it's coming. McKissick flies to the basket, the scoop and score is good. Good drive here by McKissick, he's going to adjust. Just the help side defender, Johannes Tiemann is going to rotate over. Well, scoop and score action here by McKissick.
a boy or a girl. Um, but we were extremely nervous on the drive here. And now we're anxious to find out. But now it feels like a party. <laughs> the nerves have gone away. Now it feels like a party. Members of the jury, I understand you have a verdict. Okay, we're going to take you straight to the courthouse now in Minneapolis where the verdict is about to be announced. Let's listen. That he prayed for justice and that on the evidence that he's seen, he was hoping for a guilty verdict. And that is what has happened. The death of George Floyd last year is marked international outright. Due to Mr. Chauvin being a former police officer and the high profile nature of his case, he will be closely monitored for his own safety according to newspaper reports and has been put on the suicide watch list. Thank you.